Hello everyone, it's week four of the Nature Prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. Um, for anybody that ever wants to join in with any of our prompts, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group in the description box below. Um, but these are the journals that um, I've got going that um, I started creating um, in week one. And I've been adding um, pages and bits and pieces of ephemera over the um, last three weeks. Um, now today, I just want to continue with the um, ephemera theme and I want to play around with some wax. Now I want to play um, with some of the eco prints that I made in week two and you'll find links to all the um, projects that I mention in this video in the description box below so you know that's where you need to go to find all the links um, but I made these with a mixture of avocado skins and stones and also red onion skins um, and you know I've just come up with some fantastic results but I want to try my hand at turning these into vellum paper um, to use as a ephemera in my journals. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I want to take one of these, um, this was made with the avocado skins, we'll take one um, of the red onion skin ones as well, which one do I want to use? I think, no, I'll use that one there. Um, you can see that I've got lots of different colours here and that's because I've used um, a multitude of um, different ingredients um, when I was doing the eco dyeing um, as well as different papers. Um, this is white paper, some of these are done on cream paper. Um, that's another avocado skin paper I think. Um, but as I say, just you know, go and check out the videos in the description box below. Now I want to try my hand at turning some of these pages, as I've said, um, into vellum um, type paper and I'm going to be testing these supplies here. I've got some encaustic medium, this is RNF encaustic um, medium which is purified beeswax with Damar resin. Um, this is um, in pellet form so that's what um, that looks like. Um, but you can do this um, easily as well with um, just a regular household candle. This is just a chunk um, from a white household um, candle so we'll have a go with this. Um, I've also got um, this slab of beeswax as well which was sent to me by a friend um, in Happy Mail so I want to um, have a play with this. I think this was um, the intention that she had in mind when she sent it to me, you know who you are. Um, so we'll have a play around with that and I'm going to be using um, an iron to melt my wax. Um, this is a really cheap iron that I bought from Amazon, it's called Igenix, that's the brand. Um, it's a flat bed iron, so it's got no um, steam holes. It's not um, a steam iron. And I think this was um, 11 or 12 pounds, really inexpensive. Um, but if any of you have got um, a travel iron, that would be perfect. But you can do this with um, a heat tool as well. Now, I want to start off by experimenting on just some white copier paper because I just want to see um, how the different um, products um, look on the paper. So I'm starting off um, with the white candle and I'm just applying it to the iron like this um, and then popping it onto my paper and I'm just going to do this until the whole of the paper is just completely covered um, in wax and you can tell where it's covered because you can see it's starting to go see-through like like this. It doesn't take long, this is such a quick um, and easy process. Now, if you end up with any um, small gaps like this, you can just rub it um, onto the paper like this. Just heat it with your iron. Um, just rub the wax on. Of course, mine's sliding um, all over the place. Rub it on, heat it with your iron. Um, and, you know, it's just really quick um, and easy to get um, the coverage. This is really difficult to do on, on camera. But, you know, a minute, that's all it takes just to get full coverage of your, your piece of paper. So my piece of A4 paper is now covered in wax and you can see how it's turned from this um, to this. Um, and this is now just completely translucent. Um, I'm just going to move that piece of parchment paper um, away because what I want to do now is just iron off any of the excess um, wax. I've got two pieces of regular copier paper here and I'm just going to iron these just to get rid of any of the excess wax. just like um, this. 
and then I can flip the paper um, over and do the other side um, as well. This really is such a quick um, and easy process. Here we go. So that is my piece of vellum paper. Ta-da! Just look at that. The marks you can see are on the paper um, here, the under paper, not on the vellum um, itself. That just looks like pure tracing paper. It's amazing. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the encaustic medium and the beeswax because I just want to see what the difference um, is. There is no smell on this whatsoever. Absolutely um, fabulous. I would advise you though to work in a well ventilated area. So let's try it with the um, beeswax. So I'm going to do exactly um, the same thing um, again. Just melt my um, beeswax. Try and get as much coverage um, as I can. And then I can just fill in um, the blank spots, as it were. So rub your iron over it and then just rub, rub, rub. Um, in fact, that doesn't work as well as it did with the um, household um, candle. But you can see how quick... Um, this is to get coverage. So again, we've got full coverage um, with the wax. I'm just going to peel this um, off the parchment paper and again, bring back my two pieces of copier paper and let's just iron off any of the excess. And I just want to see if there's um, any difference in these types of wax to the colouring of the paper um, especially and the smell and let's see what we've got um, underneath so that's the second piece of parchment paper I did um, end up creasing um, this one here but you know that looks pretty good to me so here we go this is the candle wax um, and this is the beeswax and I really can't tell um, any major difference um, this one is slightly more yellow I would say um, but not um, a great deal of difference. Can you tell the difference? So next I'm going to try it with the um, encaustic medium and I'm just going to sprinkle a few of these onto my piece of paper like this. And again, I'm just going to iron over the top and these will just um, instantly um, melt. So you can see how quick and easy this is to get coverage. And I'm just going to plonk any that I haven't used um, back on because I don't want to um, waste them. So let me show you the results side by side. And in all honesty, there really, really isn't a lot of difference um, between all of these. Um, the Daymar resin, I would say, definitely came out um, the clearest and most um, consistent. But they all worked. And let me just show you. Here's a piece of Japanese um, book paper. This is just a piece of regular A3 copier paper that um, I'm popping these on. But just look how transparent um, the papers have become. So that's that's the um, encaustic medium with the Daymore resin. Um, this is the beeswax, which definitely has more of um, a yellowy um, tone, but again, really transparent. Um, and here is the one with the regular um, household um, candle. So they've all worked a great success. And so I guess my message here is use whatever you have. Um, don't feel that you've got to go out and buy new supplies just to try out this technique. Now I'm going to go off camera and do the same technique um, with these four pieces of paper here. I'm going to use the encaustic medium just because it's quicker. Um, but I've also got four very similar pages here just so that we can have a look and um, see what the difference is after I've done it. Well, oh my gosh, I'm thrilled to bits with the results. And it's absolutely fascinating um, just seeing the results side by side with the before and after. So of course, these are the pages that have had um, the wax treatment so let me just show you the comparisons so of course this one here um, is some of the um, avocado skin paper and you can just see how translucent um, it is um, let me just grab a piece of Japanese book paper can you see the book paper underneath um, that just shows how translucent that is um, and this is how it looked um, before so completely opaque so that one um, is that one there um, this is one of the the um, red onion skin pages and again just look how translucent um, that is so again um, before and after I just love that 
and it just looks so much more vintagey as well once it's had the um, wax treatment um, this is a, another one of the avocado skin um, pages um, and again you can see um, that these all look um, completely different and I'll leave the link to the um, video showing how I did these because they all had um, different types of treatments as well which is why the look is so different um, but just look at that they're just absolutely beautiful I love the vintage um, look of this one here um, and again the last red onion skin so again just look how translucent um, that one is in comparison to the opaque version of this one here and again it's just got that really vintagey um, grungy look now I couldn't resist trying this out on a couple of different types of paper um, somebody very kindly left some words for us to be able to print out in the Facebook group a few weeks ago I am so sorry because I can't remember who the lady was and I just can't find um, the post I'll have another look and if I find it I'll leave it um, in the um, Facebook group I'll um, put it in the announcements um, but if anybody in the meantime knows who it is then please leave me um, a comment below um, but here um, the words are just printed out on regular copier paper and here they are with the um, wax applied to it um, it just looks so beautiful again just that gorgeous gorgeous um, vellum look about it um, and you can see all the words um, from the sheet below as well so you can see how translucent um, that one has become and then I also decided to play around with one of my masterboards um, as well. So again, I've um, put this in into my photocopier. So I've just printed this off at home. Now I've printed these off onto, um, now I'm not sure whether this is mixed media paper or, or cartridge paper. It's quite thin, probably, I don't know, about 120 um, GSM. Um, so this is the regular copy um, here. So that's that one there. And then this one, I've applied the wax to just look at the look it's just gorgeous just look how incredibly um translucent that one is it's just stunning absolutely beautiful and look how yellow it's become as well i just love the vintage look of that paper so i can't wait um to have a play around with some of these now I want to start off by making some kind of a pocket um, for the back um, cover of my journal here and I want to use this um, translucent paper and so what I'm going to do um, is just fold this roughly um, in half um, just want to find the um, midpoint that will do um, and then I'm going to grab my um, ruler my um, mat underneath has warped from where I've been using my um, heat gun so I'm just going to roughly um, tear that um, like that um, that will do fine um, so let me just have a, a look at that um, so you know that's not too bad I'm just going to um, tear the um, ends as well just because I want these to be um, raggedy um, and they're a bit too long so I'm just going to um, tear the ends off um, both of these um, as well so this one here oh hang on would have been nice if we could have um, done that in in one piece but there we go that's um that's fine so we've got both ends done there let's do this one as well these do not have to be um perfect there or thereabouts so we'll do the same um, with that one there as well there we go quite like these being all jaggedy um, let's just um, pop those together you see one is longer than the um, wider than the other and that's fine um, and then I don't want these to be too tall either so about um, here like that so I'm just going to make a mark um, there and again I'm just going to use my ruler just to tear both of them um, both of those like that and then I'm going to take this away and I'm going to sew these on my sewing machine and I quite like the fact actually that um, these are overlapping and that the back um, is longer than the um, front I'm okay with that what I might do is just apply a little bit of glue just to um, hold these together so I've just grabbed my um, glue stick let's just um, apply a small amount of glue um, just on these sides here like this just to hold it together whilst I'm um, popping it through my sewing machine um, so let's have a look it goes that way that way up like like that 
um, and I'm just going to um, sew um, just along here, along the bottom and um, along the sides. And as soon as I've done that, I'll be straight back. So I've just run this through my sewing machine. And yes, it was me that did the sewing, not Alex this time. And you can tell the difference because, of course, my sewing is completely wonky. But, you know, that's OK. I'm just going to um, make myself um, a little lip on the pocket here so i'm just using my um, circle trimmer so there we go and um, and now i can have that um, on there like that um, i think i like it that way around but i do want to um, ink around the edges first um, so i'm just going to use some of my distress ink in frayed burlap and i'm just going to go all the way around the edges like like this and then I can glue this down to the inside uh, back cover and then I can just you know pop some bits and pieces um, in there if I want to and maybe decorate um, the front um, as well isn't that just gorgeous I just love how that looks so here's my pocket I just love how that looks and so I'm going to glue that down there like that um, I'm just going to apply some Fabri-Tac or three in one and hope that this sticks. Um, I'm not sure how this will work um, with the glue and I don't want to go too far towards the edge either um, just because it will allow um, more room inside the pocket um, if I just go um, just inside the edge slightly. So we'll just apply the glue like like this and we'll see how how this works um so i'm just going to glue that down like that i want it about the same height as the one on the opposite um side so about there like that and i'm just going to weight that down um with a heavy book I also want to make a tag out of this part um, of the um, parchment paper here um, and so I'm just going to cut myself um, a tag about this size um, here so I'm going to go off and do that on my paper trimmer. Now my intention was to um, have this as a tag inside the pocket there um, but I just think that would be such a waste. I just love that as um, a focal image in its own right. What I do want to do is round off the um, corners so I'm just going to um, do that. I'm going to do it um, alternate corners as I always do um, with one corner upside down so I just love how that looks um, and I'm also thinking that I can maybe mount it um, onto a piece of this just to tie these two pages here together as well so what um, I want to do um, these edges here are already torn um, I want to do the same with this edge here so I'm just going to use my ruler um, again just to do that and then I just want to um, ink around all the edges now I've inked around the edges and I've made myself um, a couple of mini collages. Um, I've added a piece of raffia to the top here. This is um, just on a ribbon like this and I've just cut a small piece off and um, just popped a running stitch um, along the top there like that. So I just like the idea of having this um, mini collage. I've got some Dutch paper here which was gifted to me by my friend um, Elaine. So I just think that looks lovely because you can see that through. Um, the paper here now that um, that is so translucent um, the same here I've got um, another piece of that um, Dutch book paper and again you can see the detail through there and again I've just gone around the edges um, on my sewing machine um, I've left all the stringy bits because I just think that looks really really cute um, and so I'm just going to glue that down um, off center I think so that I can have some kind of quote on the right hand side and I'm just going to use some three um, in one to um, to do that. There we go and I'm just going to glue this um, slightly off centre um, just so that I can have some kind of um, quote um, on there on the right hand side and then I'm just going to glue this one down as well. So we'll just add some glue here like like this and stick that down there and I just think that those um, tie in really well um, together I'm just going to make sure that I've got that fairly um, central I 
just love how that looks. So I just need to find some kind of quote um, just to go on the right hand side. Now I've just cut, um, listen intently, just out from um, the word sheet here. Um, and I like the way that that looks there. Um, listen intently just because I've got all the music notes here. So that seems really appropriate to me. So again, I'm just going to um, glue that down with some three in one. I've inked around the edge with some espresso truffle as well so let's just glue glue this down just a small amount of glue along there like like that and where do I want that to go about there I think I just love the simplicity of those two pages that just looks beautiful to me now, I just want to do one more thing um, for today. Um, this is the other journal that I created and I've made another one of those pockets and I just want to glue that down um, onto the inside there like that. So again, we'll just add some um, three in one um, just to apply that. I don't want to go too far towards the edge um, just because it gives that um, it gives you more space to put stuff in if you don't um, apply the glue too far to the um, edge and as long as it sticks down um, then that's okay so you can see that um, I'm leaving quite a, a wide gap like like this just applying plenty of glue to that central bit um, there that's plenty so we'll glue that down where do I want that to go about about there so I'm going to have to weight that down with um, a heavy book I need some kind of focal image to go on here and whether I'll find anything today um, I don't know but what I do want to do is just stamp an image on the right hand side so I just want to add um, some lavender just to the right hand side here and um, this is from the Stampers Anonymous Tim Holt um, Wildflowers collection and the reason I've chosen lavender is of course because it matches the lavender card I did last week um, I've attached my little tab at the top I love how that looks so that will go somewhere um, in this journal too and I'm just going to use some distress ink in frayed burlap in fact I'll dab it on like like this um, I just want to keep this really really neutral so that's what I'm going to use for that and I'm just going to add this to the side. In fact, I'll just go in with some more ink just to be on the safe side. I could pull out um, my stamping platform, but it just seems just a lot of work just for one stamped image. So I'm just going to pop that down like that and just make sure that I hold that firmly um, in place to make sure that that um, ink grabs. Oh, let's lift it off. I love how that looks. Now, I decided to add some clear embossing powder to um, the Distress Oxide ink here, um, and that's just made it stand out just a little bit more, so I love how that looks. Um, now, I'm going to call this a day for the time being. I do want to add some kind of focal image to the front um, of this pocket here, maybe a leaf, I don't know. I'm going to save that until next week. I also want something to pop um, inside the pocket. I think for this one here, I'll end up leaving the pages blank and having it more as um, like a notebook. Um, I've got my bookmark which will go in there something like that. I just love that journal. I just think it's absolutely beautiful and I want some kind of a rustic simple closure as well to pop um, around it. And then this journal here of course all I've done so far is just the two back pages and I just love how that looks. That very very simple collage. Um, I do want some kind of focal image to go on on here. Not sure what that might be yet and I want something to go um, inside this pocket um, as well but I just love how that looks. I'll be playing around with this journal um, a bit more next week because of course it's a, a five week month so I do want to try and um, finish these um, journals off. 
So I do hope you like how my journals are progressing and I hope you've enjoyed um, seeing how to make your pages transparent as well. Um, such a lot of fun and so easy to do with stuff that you've probably got lying around um, your own home as well. Um, I shall be back next week to finish off some more of the um, pages in these lovely journals. I just love these very, very simple collages. I do want to keep um, these journals very, very simplistic. I don't want, you know, to busy them up too much. I just love how those pages um, look. I do want to um, put something in the pocket here. So maybe we can um, work on that next week um, as well. I also want something to pop um, in this pocket here. But if you enjoyed today's video, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, don't forget to go and check out Kylie's video as well to see what she's been up to for the Nature Prompt this week. Um, but stay safe, everyone. Thank you for watching and take care. I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.